Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's video, we're going to be going over the firmware update for the Fujifilm's X-H1. So we're going from version 1 to version 1.10. This is pretty exciting because there is a lot of amazing new features in this firmware update. There's been a lot of excitement in the forums, a lot of positive feedback. So I'm really excited to get this downloaded, installed, and definitely test it out today. So I'm looking at the uh, firmware features list and let's just go ahead and go down them one by one. Uh, first one, focus bracketing. So this is very useful for focus stacking for like macro photography in which you wanna merge a bunch of focal planes to get really sharp image in one specific area. Definitely really nice for anybody doing stuff like that. Compatibility with the Fujifilm Sin lenses. Obviously, we're not going to be able to test that because those are like $5,000 lenses and I'm not going to be getting one anytime soon. Uh, enlarge indicators, always useful to be able to see your indicators. I'm sure this is something that was asked for by a lot of photographers. This next one is probably the most interesting one and the one that people want the most, which is enhance face detect points. So you can, uh, the face detect points are more accurate, they're better. We're definitely going to be testing that out in video and maybe a little bit in photo, but that's probably not going to be in this video because I don't really have much uh, interesting things to look at, but uh, definitely super useful to have better face detect points. The next one, better Bluetooth connectivity to your app. So anybody that uses the app, you're going to really like that. I personally do not use that app, so that's not something I would test. Um, image stabilization mode on a function button so for anybody who uses it on a tripod a lot who likes to turn off is mode on and off very often this is probably going to be very useful to you and then lastly being able to back up your settings this is something that's useful if you customized all of your you know my menus and all of your function buttons you definitely want to back those up because you don't want to lose it in case of a firmware update or something happens to your camera or you could have a another X-H1 and you just want to move over your custom settings to another X-H1. So this is definitely useful, especially in a professional setting in which you may be renting additional bodies for a specific project and you just want all of your cameras to act the same. So really cool features. We're definitely going to go ahead, download it and test it out. All right. So we just went over the user notes, which is something that's very interesting. But also other people in the community have been saying that they've been seeing improvements in the IBIS system and also they're seeing better auto ISO. So this is definitely something that we want to try out. So I'm right now out and about. I don't have an ND filter on here right now. So the shutter speeds are going to be really high. I'm just kind of curious if it's going to look different. Um, I've always known that when you're using the IBIS system outside walking around without an ND filter, in a very high shutter speeds, the video is just going to look very jittery. So I'm expecting the same thing, but I really want to test it out just to see what it looks like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead inside. I'm going to put an ND filter on, really lower that shutter speed and see what it looks like then. But hopefully you're seeing a much uh, improved IBIS system. I don't know. I always thought the IBIS system was already very good. So we'll see if there's actually uh, a visible improvement to my eyes because everything's subjective at this point when it comes to auto ISO and also the IBIS system. All right, so I went ahead and put on the ND filter, really lowered the shutter speed down so that I can get a much smoother image. That's usually what it looks like. So one thing I'll tell you while I'm testing this out as I'm walking around is that I'm not going to be doing any static tests. I just don't find them to be very useful. If I'm gonna be doing a test, I'm gonna be testing it in a real world scenario of how I would use the camera. In this case, I'd be walking around with it. I'd be going in and out of dark areas and I'll be hand holding it a lot. So I really wanna see what this firmware does for these type of things. I also wanna see if the phase detect points are now going to be improved. I've never really had any issues with it. So I'm just hoping it doesn't degrade because I've been very happy with it before, but we're gonna go ahead, go inside, check out the images, see what it looks like, and hopefully we get some really good results and this firmware update's gonna help us quite a bit in both photo and the video side. So before we sit down and actually look at the video footage, one other test that I really wanna quick do, to do indoors, and that is the light and dark test. So right now I'm in a pretty well lit area of the hallway 
going to go ahead and shut off the lights, turn it back on, and see what happens to the focusing system and also the auto ISO system. So here I am, I'm in the dark right now. I'm going to turn it back on, see what that looked like. I'm going to do that one more time, turn it off, and then turn it back on, see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead, move around in the darker areas just to see what it looks like. And I'm going to go into a dark room and back out of a dark room just to see the transitions in the audio ISO because people say it is much improved. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and try it out, see what it looks like. Ooh, it is really dark in here. Don't really want to trip. So I'm going to go ahead, head my way back out, and then we're going to see what that looks like. Hopefully we get some really good results. Really excited to test this firmware out. Hopefully we'll get more improvements to come with this camera. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've been using the X-H1 since it first came out. It's been a great vlogging camera for me, but I really haven't had much issues with the autofocus system. I think my face is so close to the lens, there's really not much for it to get confused on. So it's been very reliable, it's been very good, love the slow motion. So with this firmware, I'm kind of testing what the autofocus will do when I'm recording objects kind of like in an unboxing and I'm also curious to see if there's any improvements in terms of auto ISO and the IBIS system so this is something that I'm going to be testing today so in here in my little studio I went ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing right here using the X-H1 which I normally don't do but for this particular firmware test I'm going to go ahead and do it and I'll do a quick time lapse of that <laughs> So I just got done reviewing all the videos, so the unboxing videos, the walking around videos, and the light and dark videos. So let's go from good to bad. Um, I definitely think the light and dark test, there is pretty amazing improvement in that. I really like the transitions. I think they're super smooth. They look really good, and I'm super happy with that. I don't think I would have any problems using this camera going from a dark area to light area, especially if you do it gradually. I think it does it really well now and uh, it looks super great. As far as walking around outside, I think there is a noticeable improvement without using an ND filter in terms of walking around outside. It looks pretty smooth. I can probably do a better job of walking to make it more smoother because I'm just doing my regular walk and you know when you're actually moving around the IBIS system can only do so much. Uh, a lot of it is your footwork if you want to do a walking around vlogging video although you do have to walk a little weird if you want to do that. Um, I think with the ND filter on the picture probably improves just slightly. I do like using ND filters I think there's a lot of benefits to them but if I'm stuck outside without one of these, I don't have an issue uh, recording, you know, parts of a vlog without an ND filter. And well, let's just admit it, like using these can sometimes be a real pain in the ass. So uh, not having to use it to uh, continue on vlogging is a really good thing. Now, the bad part is that in its default settings, uh, the auto settings for focus, for unboxing videos is, or any type of product video is just unusable. There's just... You know, it's too spastic, it's trying too hard, um, it's not grabbing onto any one thing and then really latching onto that focus. I think there has to be uh, a notable improvements in terms of like tracking just one specific object. This is why Canon's dual pixel autofocus continues to sell and why people will buy a 1080p Canon uh, DSLR rather than go to a 4K mirrorless camera of some sort. It's because their autofocus is just that good. Unfortunately, I think in the default settings, it's just not usable for a product, uh, any type of product videos in autofocus mode. Now, there is a lot of settings that you can change uh, for autofocus and maybe a few of them, if we change it down to really lower, you know, the, the autofocus system down a little bit, it will become usable. I don't really know. I haven't had the time to actually look into it and test it out. I probably, if I'm going to be using this camera for doing a, an unboxing, I will probably just go with um, manual focus. I just think that it's much more reliable. It's going to take a little bit more time to do it, but overall, it's just going to be better. Um, but I, I will try that out. Uh, let me know what you think about 
you know, the walking around the test and also the ND filters because I'm kind of curious about your opinions. You know, I'm a little jaded when it comes to using these things because I'm the one recording it. I would love your feedback on whether or not you think it's better with or without the ND filter because yeah, it is a bit of a pain in the ass to actually use these things, but I think it's worth it, but uh, please let me know. Overall though, I don't think the firmware affected me that much. There has been a lot of people that have been talking about drastic improvements, and I would tend to believe them. I, I think they are improved, so let me know what you think of the firmware, and if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.